pleasures. We're talking about physical pleasures or physical benefits that you could use. Like food. Food, vacation, vacation uh, clothing, clothing jewelry, comforts, right. services, luxuries. luxuries. So they made the, they made the whole um, survey and they figured out, let's say, maximum like $2 million a year. Uh, it's a few Is it recording? It's not much. How much you can, how much you can take? Even if you eat in, oh, the, in the top right. restaurants every <laughs> single day. <laughs> Even if you get a vacation every week. Oh, wow. They had another survey similar to the survey oh, that you're referring to the camera. that they calculated, guys, hold uh, on, they, they calculated wow. that based on earnings, how much money does a person have to earn to where earning more money doesn't increase the quality of your life? Yeah. Yes. $72,000. That's what? all. Per person. Meaning, yes. Meaning what? you could drive a car if, you, if you're net profit. Or you're, forget it, if you earn 72K a year, you could afford a car, you could afford a roof no, over your head, never. you're not going to drive a Bentley or a Rolls Royce, but you'll drive your Honda Civic, yeah. you'll eat the same food, you'll no, go to sleep no. in the mattress, you'll be able to afford a phone, you'll send your kids to 72,000. By earning 100,000 or 200,000 a year, the only thing that you add to is the type of car you'll be driving, but then the quality of your life more okay. less, not yeah. anymore. So I don't want to get into the discussion, guys. Being a this obviously, 100%. Uh, again, yes, obviously, you're right, and every, you know, it's expensive. Obviously, are expensive. Uh, each one of us has these own ideas, right? I'm, and all, I'm all the different different things. You know, the US, but I want to I want to say th average, this point. Average, 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 more bro, Jewish kosher meat is twice the price. I'm saying everything is double the price for being a so Jew. So for a Jew, it's well forty. We totally agree with you. We totally agree with you. We're not talking about a Jewish right, lifestyle. Right. But the the even Jewish lifestyle also has a cap. It doesn't yeah. matter because the more the more Jewish stuff you do, the more Hashem rings down. Yeah, do you know that? Need more to do you know that Hashem could give you? Well, the more money you make, the more expenses you have. Trust exactly. Me. Trust me. <laughs> no. Do you know I that? Know every dollar gonna go. Do you know? Do you know that Hashem could? Give you a number that will include all your expenses, even if you're a Jewish person. How? And there are numbers like that. Okay. Yes. Hundred okay? percent. So uh, one day you'll be billionaire. You'll know. You'll find out that you paid for everything, but there is so much more money. You just don't even know what to do with. Then you park it in stock. Yeah, you're going to put it in stocks, you're going to put it into Picasso paintings, you're going to <laughs> give it to the dolphins in the Pacific. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> but you are not going to be able to use it anymore. Yeah, you can't consume that much. You can't eat consume. that much. You don't understand, like... I have already plans. Like, I'm going to open up yeshivas. I'm going to open up. Oh, that's what everybody's saying. You're, <laughs> You're not eating it. You're not eating it. I have to do this to support everyone. That's good. Everyone. What do you mean? It's of not course. My kids. When I said Picasso, I didn't mean you. When I said the dolphins and Pacific, I didn't mean you. Right. Really, you is yeshiva of the shoes. <laughs> you're right, but the idea is the same Next that you're not now. using, <laughs> you're not eating this stuff. The idea is you're not observing. It's not for you. You are in the mixed out. That's for my kids. What the point? Yeshiva. What's <laughs> yeshiva's for the kids? What am I going to send them? So you're going to be supporting more, more yeshivas than the kids that you have. What are you talking about? Okay, but I'm saying that I'm know you can't possibly even place your kids I'm gonna there. I'm going to know who's the teachers. I'm going to know who's the, who I'm hiring. I'm going right. to know who's no. the... Okay, Michael. You get the point. Folks, huh? you get the point. <laughs> what we're making, there is a cap of money of how much you could consume a year. That's you it. can't consume... It's, it's consumption. It's not. It's not like investing. How much can you spend, or how much can you invest, or how not many only things that. can you buy? Not only that. Do you know that all pleasures in this world is not real pleasure? It's absence of pain. I For example, it. I'm I only able to enjoy food as long as I am hungry. Or as long as yeah, as long as hungry. I'm only able to enjoy sleep as long as I am tired. I'm only able to enjoy anything as long as there is certain pain. That I am taking away in the, need, in the process. Need, true. Once the need is met, you're you no longer have that need. That's right. That's that's by like, accurate, I think. The brain releases yeah, that. Yeah, but that's not only that. If I sleep more than enough for me to get rested, it becomes get, pain. Yeah, you don't get. If I eat more than after I already satiated, it becomes pain. Yeah. And same thing with all other pleasures. So really, you can't win because if all pleasure is only absence of pain, so it's not real pleasure. 
Mm-hmm. It's, it's not fake. fake. It's not right. It's not not fake, but it's. So now we understand what Chachamim meant. Chachamim, our rabbis, they had such deep and far-sighted vision of life that something that it takes a lifetime for us to uncover. They said there is no reward for mitzvah in this world. Mm. They, they meant like this. That this world, all the pleasures of this world, is only uh, absence of pain. But the reward for mitzvah has to be real pleasure. The pay for, for mitzvah has to be real pleasure. It's not fair to reward for a mitzvah with just taking away my pain. It's like a guy takes a gun and says, do this and this and this. Okay, what am I get for it? I'm just not going to kill you. Thank you very much. These are the pleasures that we experience. This saying. is basically our pleasures. Uh-huh. Hashem says, it's not fair for me to say to you, you're going to work, you're going to pray, you're going to give tzedakah, you're going to learn Torah, and all I'm going to pay you back is just absence of pain. You're not going to die from pain. Right. Because you live for 70 more years, and that's it, you know? <laughs> it's like our bodies are made in a little... You know, structure that we live in, and we have to eat. You don't eat, you die. You don't sleep, you die. You don't do this, you die. You don't go to the bathroom, you die, right? So you're constantly trying to just like get by to the next day. So, like, right, you're doing these mitzvot, you're doing these, you know, so you live in your life, but. So, where, where is the reward? Right? If Hashem created this world, right? It says Dayin, right? Up until, up until you. So, get... that's exactly what this Gemara means. Uh-huh. You know what it says? Dayin, we're going to say enough because we're going to realize that. This is not worth it. This is not what we really want. We don't want material goods. We developed enough to understand what this world is all about. From the world itself, we know that there's got to be a next world. From the way things set up in this world, we come to conclusion that there's got to be that world that we don't see. But the funny thing is, Jews don't focus on the next world. Our religion isn't based around like the afterlife or the world to come. It's based on what you can do here to better yourself as a character, as a human, right? What mitzvot you could fulfill. So we have to use our body to do certain things, to make mitzvot, right? And then like, even like if you take Rambam or whatever, right? His writings were like, they weren't focused like the other religions, for example. Like, oh, you're going to burn in hell or you're going to go to heaven, you know, depending on how you act. Right? Our thinking is mostly here, on this earth, while we're here. You know, this isn't a place for us to suffer. This is a place for us to toil, to work. Right. Right? Versus their thinking is just have faith. Someone came, you know, 2,000 years ago, died for you, and all you have to do is just have faith. And all the good things are going to come to you there. You know? Or we also want this world to be good. So he died so that we could enjoy this world. Uh-huh. Ultimately, it, to, to them, the focus is this world. But no one has to die, to die for us in order to atone or to make uh, uh, us feel good, better about this world. Because we don't want this world. We want the next world anyway. We have the next world. This world we use as a tool, not as an object of pleasure. So therefore, we don't need anyone to uh, embellish it or anyone to uh, ease our way into this world or to uh, allow us to use it without any back thought or remorse. So we don't need anyone to die for us. Also in Tanakh it says you can't. Yechesko, right? Zika. No, uh, Jeremiah says that I'd rather not kill the... Like, you can't have someone die for your sins. I'd rather the sinner turn away from his sins and come back to me, Right? Is it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it like right. the Tanakh goes against their the fundamental whole concept, teaching. The whole concept. I think their concept they got from the martyrs of our sages, where the martyrs, you know, Rabbi Kiva and all of them, they base Hashem took them as a merit for us. For us not doing tshuva, right? They were the martyrs. It doesn't say that. It doesn't they, say that. They, they call them the ten martyrs. They were the. Asa, the they call them Asara Haruge Mok. Ten people were murdered by Romans. Right. Martyr is that's not what martyr means. There is a Russian martyr like uh, um, martyr means uh, um, someone dies for a cause. Well, not dal jizn, or jertvini, or jertva. Sacrifice. Martyr means jertva. Right. 
Right, they sacrifice. were the sacrifice for But our... it doesn't say that they're sacrificed. They're called Asara Rugi Malchut. It's a misunderstanding that they're, they're not sacrificed for us. It I mean, say that. maybe not like an intentional, it's not like they gave themselves, but Hashem took them. Uh, we, they, they were the bread of faith. Uh, in our in the prayer that we say on, on Monday, on Thursday, on, t- on Mondays and Thursdays, there's the men of faith prayer that we say. You took them from us because we didn't do tshuva. Who says that? that? It's in the the sitter that we say on uh, there's, twice there's, a week. There is a concept that the wretches die on um, yeah. because of the. the Even Rav Alfonan yeah. Wasserman called himself and his group a korban for right. for the sins of Israel. He said he meant like this, that at least we should be. Let, he said like this, that if we could view ourselves as a korban and therefore have no, just like by korban, a negative thought makes the korban pasul. So if we don't have negative thoughts against Hashem, then we could hope that it's going to be a korban. At least we should be prepare ourselves to be as a korban to say that they were korban. No, no, only Hashem decides. Asar Harugi Malchut. In fact, it says Gemara says that when the Rabbi Kiva was killed, the Malachim answered, "Why are you doing? Is that Torah? Is this Torah? This is Torah, and this is the reward." And what did Hashem answer? Kachol al Don't ask this questions. Is, don't ask questions. This, I made the right decision. If it was like you, then we have a very good answer. Should have said that it's, it atones for the Jewish people. Now, Yehuda is right. It says in the, in the Gemara that when Sadiq dies, it's a kapara for the generation. But it's a kapara for generation doesn't mean that his death or something takes, away their, sins, takes yeah. away their sins. It means that they're going to do tshuva. They're going right, to do tshuva. In a way, buys more time for us. Not buys more time. They're going to do tshuva. The tzaddik died. If we feel They're bad, see, oh wow, the tzaddik. We feel died. bad, so we did some shuva, so it takes away a bit of. No, by the time also, no. what do we buy more time? The Christian faith foundationally believes that you can't fulfill Moses' law. That's what Paul said, because no one can, is perfect. No one can fulfill his law. God had to send the Son to die for everyone's sins, and now you're, you have salvation. You understand? It goes against. I do understand. I've been trying to get. I've been trying to get converted by. The, yeah, 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 no, that's what, so no. That's they they hold like problem. this. They say like this that we do that that the humankind is doomed because the old gener- old testament g- tr- places unrealistic expectation on the person. Six hundred and thirty mitzvot are unrealistic, unattainable. Uh, uh, unattainable. You cannot do them. So uh, basically, put them archive them. Not applicable. That wasn't even meant for them. And that's it. <laughs> no, for us also, unattainable. Oh. No one could do it. They feel no one could do it. We we claim that we could do it, but we can't. Yeah, but it's impossible now. Okay, so whatever is applicable, can we do? Baruch Hashem, Shabbat, no one's complaining. Everyone likes Shabbat. Right. If lead, no one's complaining. Also, they said you're born of a original sin. Right? Adam's sin. Right. So you have to be baptized in order to get washed off of that sin. Their whole theology is crooked. They take, Why do you guys they care about their pick. theology? Is that just something to go no, on? Like, because we're having Wait, a conversation no, something about... You understand things in comparison. In context, right? Uh-huh. In comparison. Oh. We're bringing out a concept like this, that by us, this world and the... the, the okay. This world is the tool. It's like they take our ideas and they twist them. No, there's a very, very big... This is a and Yaakov. There is a very big principle in conflict here. Uh-huh. Question is, if this world is has any benefit or is it two? Is it value in, its, in itself or is only two? So Yaakov Avinu attributes zero value to this world. He viewed it as two to get to the next world. What does it mean, tool? Every morsel of food is only a tool. It's not pleasure. It's just to take away the pain so I could serve Hashem more. Uh, every single pleasure is only to give me well, well, another boost to, to serve and Hashem. Value? Okay, what, what would be value? But if it's value, then there is a big problem. What is value? What do you mean by value? Value means that the pleasure is, uh, is good. Pleasure in, in, itself in itself is good. Right. In itself is good. We view it as just absence of pain. But if you view the pleasure is good, the then, then there's yeah. a problem. Mm-hmm. What's the problem? 
So take the, the way Christians resolve the problem with sex and the Muslims resolve the problem with sex. Christians say it's so terrible. Celibacy. You, you celibacy, don't get married. Mm -hmm. Muslims, they have their own way to do this. By us, it's an altogether third way, which I'm not going to go into right now, but I did give classes on this. So, um, why do they have such approach? Don't ever get married or marry many women. Because they're trying to figure out how to uh, use this value properly, how to maximize the value. So some, and they see intrinsic uh, contradiction. On one hand, it feels like a pleasure, but on the other hand, there's so much pain attached to it. So they, they confuse. I don't know. I don't think Judaism views it as just a tool. I think there's a value in it as well. There's an aspect. When Jews do a mitzvah, they do it in a beautiful way, right? They don't just say, oh, it's just a tool, so what's the difference? I'm going to have this kind of menorah or that kind of menorah. No, they buy a beautiful menorah because they see a value in the menorah. And the they mitzvah. Agree. And, and, agree. 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 Right? The way I Jews see. Jews drive all very nice cars and build beautiful houses. They don't live in a hut. If it would be just a tool... You're bringing a proof from the fact that people build big, big houses? I don't think it's a proof. People could be building build houses because they, uh, their wife said, I want this type of house. Okay, I'm saying in so general you see Jews... A man? You think all these houses is because of the man? I, all these houses because of the women? Not only the women. Because, it's the, because the woman is in charge of the house. Right. She says... I want like this, I want like this, I want like this, I want like this. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to challenge each one of you here. Who is going to be the one who's going to talk to you about the house? In the, the future? When, in a year, and two years, when, it's time, when the family grows and when you're going to need a house? It's only going to be your wife. You're going to be very happy with one thing. Your bed your and your work. work. And that's it. Yeah. And your car, maybe. If, if I didn't. <laughs> That's all you're in the house. Yeah. What? Exhibit A. <laughs> yeah, he's going to have a Tesla. Right? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so, so if... Is, is that's the thing. Like that's, when, that's how I explain that's sex. Like it? <laughs> Remember how I explained it? But I like to drive. It's... I drove for my when boy. you're using it for someone else's pleasure... Yeah. Someone else's pleasure... Yeah. Now it becomes... Yeah. A mitzvah. Huh? In other words, the only value in the nice house, in, in sex, in food, is that you fulfilling your wife's desires. So for you, it still translates into a mitzvah, a tool. It's only when you use it for something higher. Right? For chesed, for you giving, for fulfilling your wife's for purpose. Right? Yes. For yes. Yes. But the actual value, no. It's value because she wanted it. If she asked for it, when you get it, it's value. If she never asked for it, you got it, it's misery. Okay. It does. It shuts off force deliveries. Let's go on. And it has cameras everywhere. 12 cameras. And in the dashboard also records everything. And, and drives itself. Give one, you want to continue? Is Amr Rabbi Eliezer? Rabbi Eliezer said, "Begimul mikomod hofia." First word online is hofia. In three places, hofia ruach hakodesh ribet dino ruach hakodesh. In three places, there is ruach hakodesh. Ribet dino shel shem. In ribet dino of shem, or ribet dino shel shmuel haramati. Which is Shmuel Anavi, the Prophet Shmuel, who be dino shel Shlomo, be bet dino shel Shem, dechtiv vayaker Yehuda, vayomer tzadkam imeni. In the in the bet dino of Shem, there was Ruach Hakodesh because Yehuda. The whole story with Yehuda was what Yehuda lived by mistake with his daughter-in-law, which was with Yibum, really a mitzvah, and eventually Tamar, she was pregnant. He didn't know that she got married from him. He thought that she was Mazana and he ordered her execution because there were, that was the, the aloha at that time. But she said, what do you mean? I have your stuff you gave me. And she produced proof that it was from him. So he said, He said, she got pregnant from me. So Gimara says, 
Dilma ki heichi de azal iho legaba, azal nami in the shacharin legaba. How does she know that? It, how did he know that it's from her? Maybe just like she lived with him, she lived with another, another man. Because it says yatsad batkol. First word is yatsad batkol. Wa amra mimeni yatsu kushim. The Gemara says that a, a, ruach, a, a, a voice came out from Shamayim and said, let me just see this translation exactly. Um, the, these hidden things emanated from me, many. Hashem, so to speak, sanctioned, sanctioned, I should say, sanctioned this uh, union, and he, Hashem himself said at that time, uh, I decree that he should live with her. So we see from here that God, the Ruach HaKodesh actually spoke at that time. Uh, actually uh, uh, sounded, and that was the Din of Shem. How do we know that it was, <clears throat> that the same thing happened in the Din of Shmuel? Because Shmuel said like this, Shmuel gathered at the, at the last year of his life, Hineni Anubi, and he gathered all the people and he said, <clears throat> uh, please answer, Neged Hashem and Neged Mishicho. Please answer before Hashem and before the uh, Shlomo, uh, before the king. At Shor Milakachti Vayomeru Lo. Did I take an axe from you? And they said, Lo Ashaktanu Valorat Satanu. No, you never took anything from us. You never charged us. You never took anything from us. Vayomer Eid Hashem Veid Mishicho Kilo Matzatem Beyadim Uma. You didn't find anything in my hand. Shmuel felt that he has to justify himself with the people, clear? And he asked them, did I take anything from him? No, everyone said no. Vayomer, so the question is, <coughs> why does it say Vayomer 8? How did, how, did, uh, how did it be? Maybe someone didn't speak up. What do you mean? Everyone said that no, no one, um, everyone just said, Ishmael didn't take anything from us? It's, and why does it say Vayomer, not Vayomru, mi boyle? It should have said Vayomru, they said. The answer is, Yotzeh the bat kol ve omra, ani eid badavar azet. A voice came out from Shemayim and said, I am a witness that, it, that Shmuel didn't take from anybody. So again we see that uh, Ruha Kodesh... Uh, oh, where was the Ruha Kodesh with the Yehuda? We're saying that when it says over there, Satka Mimeni, Mimeni means from me. Those That word from me was actually the voice of, of God. Oh, through him. He said it. Uh, when it says Vayomer Eid Ani Bat of Shmuel, I am the witness. It was Hashem. We're gonna just get to that. But mm-hmm. uh, how do we know Shlomo had Ruach Hakodesh? Because Shlomo Vayana Melech, because the whole fa- famous story with Shlomo Melech, there were two women, and they gave birth at the same time, mm-hmm. and then one of them oh. killed her son, and she took the son of the other <coughs> and claimed that it was her son. So they gave the Shlomo Melech to decide whose son is. What did Shlomo Melech say? Cut the baby in half. Cut the baby in half? So one of them said, <laughs> no, don't no, 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 don't do it. So, and then it says like this. Um, it says, Tnula, uh, Shlomo said, Vayomer HaMelech, Vayomer Tnula, Et HaYeled HaChai, Vahamed, Lotimiteu. So when she said, don't kill him, she said, Shlomo said, give the baby to her and do not kill him. He imo. And then he added two words. She's his mother. So So uh, how did how did he know exactly? Maybe she is lying. Those two words, he she is his mother, it was actually from Shamayim. Hashem said it. So okay, we have proof. Now to tell you the truth, uh, I don't know exactly um, why only these three places. And exactly what's the so to speak, so special, specific. I would say that there were more places in Jewish people where they were. Like Ruha Kodesh. Huh? Like who? Bilam, Bilam. Bilam, Balat. No, we don't want, we want to find Jewish places. Um, so we're going to stop here because we're going to have for our Arabic. But we still, maybe for next time, I'll figure out. What was that prophet who came with the other Baal prophets and then the fire came down? Eliyahu. Right? That was another place with Ruha Kodesh. That God showed it. This prophecy is really... But, it, really but it wasn't words. It was just an action of fire coming down. Ah, uh, it's not the same thing? No. I mean, Ruach Kodesh means like an actual message. Prophecy. Prophecy, message. So, I don't know why... In three three places, there was Ruach Kodesh, but there were prophets. First of all, there were prophets. They, they all have Ruach Kodesh. 
And uh, it's just very difficult to understand. Only in three places by Jewish people, there were much more. Maybe these are the three pertinent places that the Gemara uses as an example to bring down whatever, you know, is disgusting, like in, in context of the discussion that we're having. I, mean, pertinent, I don't know what you mean. Pertinent, in, in, I don't see the. I don't see even. The I think the only connection is we have three things that Bet Din said and Hashem mm-hmm. agreed with them, uh-huh. and now we have three <laughs> things. Also three things, but is it connected to, with, with those three? No, it's just the connection is only there was three things. Three things, three things. Hanukkah, three things are uh, Megillah, Megillah, Megillah or or saying saying no, not Hanukkah, Megillah, saying Hashem's name when you say hello, and Maser, Maser, Maser to the Levi, to the Kohanim. To Kohanim. So I'll, I'll, I'll try to look into it why this three places. It could be that these three places we have a specific pasuk in Tanakh that there was a, a message from Hashem. Yeah, we're coming. How many are you? We have two. We have six. Is that an extra? Why, you want? Okay, so I'll leave it. Come. Okay, let's go down first. I'll prepare it up. You're number 10, by the way. Okay, I'm coming up.